And so the hoopoo bird says, we need to make this journey. We need to bring a message back. We need to remind everybody about the feather in their heart. So one by one, the, words, the birds who were all excited in the beginning, thinking this is a good idea, began to doubt. The nightingale, well, I'd love to sing all night to the roses. I don't know that the roses could live without me. And the hoopoe says, well, if there's, there are no roses left, there won't be anyone to sing to. You better come with us on this journey. And uh, the parrot spoke, you know, the bright green, beautiful, beautifully colored parrots. Says, well, you know, I live in the warm, moist jungles. I don't know if I could survive outside that environment. And <clears throat> what if I can't find my way back? And <clears throat> then the peacock said, well, you know, I'm... I'm really quite magnificent and beautiful and I'm an expert and I know everything. And quite honestly, there's no proof of what you're saying is true. <laughs> <laughs> and the hoopoe says, oh, you are a very foolish bird and you, you have coldness in your heart. You need to trust what your heart is telling you. And the duck says, well, I'm very aware of all the poisons in the water because I have to swim in that water and, and get my food from it. So I'm with you, I'm going and I will help. And so the hoopoe thanks the duck for its courage. And the partridge says, I've been injured in, in the wars that have hurt the land and it has killed, they have killed my family. And I am full of hate for those people who did these things. And my only wish is for revenge so that others will suffer as I have suffered. And yet because of that pain, I understand the earth's pain. So I'll go with you. And the hoopoe says, well, the journey may heal your heart. And so on and so forth. The hawk saying, I'm a great warrior and why should I go fight that battle when there's so many more magnificent and glorious battles to fight here? And the heron who says, I'm just such a gentle creature and I just stand with stillness and I dream dreams. And, and the hoopoe says, well, dreams can lead you in a direction you, you may not want to go uh, and put you to sleep. So come and find all the, uh, come with us to this house of, of the treasure and perhaps your dreams will come true. And um, so the hummingbird spoke as being too small. The owl spoke as being, uh, that's, you know, I've been around a long time. It's too late for us. It's just too late to do this. And um, so after the birds all spoke, uh, the hoopoe said once more, how are you going to light a tiny flame. How, if you cannot light a tiny flame, how will you reach the blazing fire at the heart of your life? You must have the heart of a lion to make this trip. So they said, well, tell us a little about the great being. Maybe that will help. And she's the hoopoe says, you have forgotten the golden feather in your hearts. Like a song on the breath of the great being, if you love the earth as much as she has loved you, set out with a fiery heart and make that your joy. So the birds agree. After all that introduction, the birds finally agree, but they have to cross seven valleys. And these valleys are full of darkness and they are occupied by, uh, each valley has its own terrible monster that casts a spell. And the monsters are there because they have a terrible fate, uh, pain and wound in their hearts. And that has caused them to be separated from the great being. And in their loneliness and pain, they've become dangerous and terrible and hard as stone. So since all the birds are different, they're gonna have to fly in their own way across these valleys, but they're warned by the hoopoe, watch out for those spells. And we're, I, she, uh, the hoopoe encourages the songbirds to sing songs of courage and hope to carry them through. So they begin in the first valley is the valley of doubt. And the hoopoe says, be careful, don't listen to the words because the words will get inside you and they will sound like your own voice. And then you'll start to believe it, but don't believe it, it's not your voice. And so as they go through, uh, many of them are caught under the spell and say, oh, we can't do this, we're not strong enough. We can't get through this darkness. We've never done anything like this before. And so some of them fly back and fall down uh, to the earth. And 
<clears throat> so the next, I, I want to jump forward now to the next one. The next second valley was the Valley of False Dreams. Uh, the air was very sweet, suffocating. And the voice there says, I'll show you a quicker, easier way to get to the garden of the great being. Follow me and I'll give you a special drink that will make you brave and strong. I'll give you dreams that will make you forget your fear and loneliness. And the hoopoe says, don't do this, don't listen. You will fall into a deep sleep. And that's what begins to happen. But the songbirds sing and bring them out of that sleep. And many of them are able to go forward, although some fall under the spell. Then they come to the third valley, the Valley of Envy. And again, the spell is that they want to be like someone else. The hummingbird wants to be strong like the eagle. The eagle wants to be clever like the owl. The owl wants to be beautiful like the peacock. The peacock wanted to sing like the nightingale and so forth. And so the hoopoe has to remind them, remember the feather in your heart. Remember the golden feather which links you to each other and the great being of, uh, of life, of all life. And let go of your wish to be someone else and be true to yourselves. And so the uh, terrible net cause uh, that captured them uh, through these voices was cut away by the tiniest little bird, the um, hummingbird, who found ways to free them, to get out of this net. And so they flew on to the next one. And the next valley was the Valley of Hate. And this was a terrible volcanic kind of place with all sorts of flaming rivers of molten lava and, and the uh, acrid smell of all of that. And, and so the voice there says, where hate rules, nothing lives. If you come, you have to come through me and you will die. <clears throat> but again, the, uh, the, the birds listen to the, the songs and, of hope and of courage and uh, the partridge who had suffered in the wars of earth did not surrender and inspired the other birds and encouraged them as saying, you can break this spell, come with me, follow me, you can break this spell. And some did, and some fell down to the earth. And the birds that moved, were able to move on went through the valley of power. And in the valley of power, they had to overcome the spell of the monster that would say, I control everything. I know the truth about everything. I am always right. If you stay in my valley, you will have all that power and you will be able to control other people, those other weak and helpless birds. And you'll never again need to suffer. And uh, again, in the, uh, the birds began to fall under the spell and the peacock began to falter but then heard the voice of the hoopoe that said, don't listen, don't listen, don't listen. And of course the peacock was able to overcome it and the birds moved on. So I'm kind of reducing the story a little bit here. So after they broke the spell of that darkness, they came to the sixth valley, the valley of cruelty. And in this valley, the monster would say, it's all right to be cruel. It's fun to be cruel. It's brave to be cruel. And the hawk was the one this time who understood what cruelty was because of the, of the half bird, half demons that flew out of the mountain of the place of cruelty, he recognized as the ghosts of those whom he had killed. And he realized he did not want to kill anymore and wanted to make those whom he had killed now to be his friends. And he's, he says, now I am a warrior on behalf of life. And so he breaks the spell and they, they go on to the, one, the, to the next one. And the last one, the Valley of Despair. And this is the one which is the last and the most difficult trial for this one has the, this uh, monster has the deepest wound and is more terrible than all the others. And in this valley, the birds could see nothing. The darkness was black, as black as a raven's wing. The monster's breath squeezed them like a python. 
The owl felt the power of the monster, sees her like the tentacles of an octopus, pulling her deeper and deeper into an icy darkness and an icy blackness colder than the coldest water she had ever felt on earth. But she did not forget the hoopoo's words. And she said over and over again, you have the, uh, the voice that was trying to speak to her said, you have failed the quest. Your journey is useless. There's no point to anything. There's no garden. There's no treasure. There's no great being at the edge of time. But as the nightingale's song came to the owl's ears and the ears of the other, it helped defeat the, the spell of the monster. And the, um, the nightingale said, I sing to help you trust yourselves, to help you remember, remember, remember joy. And so they followed the hoopoo then, which by the time that all these spells were broken, a brilliant light beam shone. And all they had to do is follow the hoopoo along this light beam that took them to the ocean that is different or the sea that is different from all seas. And then they're afraid because they were supposed to dive into this and go down, down, down to find the, the palace with the hid, hidden treasure. And they were afraid because they, well, what, maybe we'll drown. But the kingfisher said, no, you won't. I know how to do this, follow me. So they go down, 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 deep into the water. And just when they think it was too far to go with no strength left, there they were. They were at the palace of the hidden treasure. And someone who had the transparency and beauty of a rainbow appeared at the door and asked, why are you here? And they said, well, we, we came to get a message. The earth has asked us to come and get a message from the great being because the earth is sick and needs help. And so re recognizing that their, their hearts were true, they were allowed into the place of the great being. When they entered what looked to be the most beautiful place they had ever seen with the most beautiful gardens and flowers and colors and music and sounds, that they had never heard before with such vibrance and such unusual uh, beauty and color. And <clears throat> so the great being says, so you've let, you who have left everything behind to follow this quest, why have you come here and what do you want? What can I do for you? And then they say, they tell the story of how the earth asked them to come because the earth was sad and needed some help. And so then they are told the answer. And the answer was, you are the message. You have broken the spells of the monsters in the valleys. So now you know what it is to follow and, under, and uh, remember the feather in your heart that links you to me, to all of life, that you are all one. And this is the message that you will take back to the earth. And this is the message that you will give to your children because one day they will take this journey as well. And you will assure them that they can do that and that they will go into the heart of the great being and bring that message back for their children. And the great being says, and wherever you are, you have only to imagine me and I will be there for you. If ever you are anxious, I will give you strength and wisdom. If ever you are afraid, you have only to imagine my light and it will be shining before you. You have flown beyond the edge of time, so you know there is no death, but only one eternal life. Tell the children of the earth that you, what you have seen, so they will not fear death. And so go now and tell the story to the earth. And they did. And as they flew back, as they flew over the valleys that were so dark and so terrible, they saw that since the spell had been broken, they bloomed with life again. And they returned and they carried on the message to the earth and to their children. And that is the story. <laughs> Amen, huh? <laughs>